Welcome back. I'm Lisa, and this week on NASA Now, we're going to get an inside look at the International Space Station and find out what the crew of Expedition 26 is working on 350 kilometers above Earth. But before we get to that, let's see what else is happening at NASA now. NASA and the National Institutes of Health recently announced three new biomedical experiments using the International Space Station's unique microgravity facilities to improve human health on Earth. The experiments will use the station to study how bones and the immune system weaken in space. Based on recent studies of salmonella bacteria in a microgravity environment, scientists may have a candidate for a salmonella vaccine to be used in space and on Earth. Salmonella is one of the most common forms of food poisoning and a major cause of childhood death worldwide. Now, let's look back at the past. In September of 2002, NASA astronaut Dr. Peggy Whitson became the International Space Station's first science officer. As science officer, Dr. Whitson oversaw all U.S. research being conducted on board the station during Expedition 5. Every day, experiments are being conducted on board the International Space Station. Some of the research focuses on sustaining life in space, while other aspects focus on enhancing life for people here on Earth. Here to give us an inside look at some of the high-tech research being performed by the crew of Expedition 26 is Tara Rutley, Associate International Space Station Program Scientist. The space station is built for research. It's an orbiting laboratory, and that's our primary goal. And at any one time, there are usually six people on orbit maintaining the space station, maintaining the science, um, trying to just stay alive and keep the vehicle orbiting. So not only do the, these crew have a responsibility to deliver results, but to be the scientist's eyes and ears and sometimes nose, but they also have a responsibility to each other to maintain safety of the vehicle, to maintain um, systems of the vehicle, anywhere from fixing a toilet all the way to delivering science experiments. The human in the loop factor is a major factor, especially when it comes to research. Everything we learn as scientists and everything we learn as engineers has the gravity variable inside of it. So it's great and it helps us under th understand things that happen on Earth. But when you get to space and that's taken away, now you're, you're talking about a microgravity environment where fluid physics is different. Fluids tend to climb the container walls in space and that doesn't happen here. Um, different air flows occur in space because you're in a closed environment and you, you, ha you lose that gravity, yeah, that convection change. There's radiation to take in effect too. Some, some hardware is affected by radiation. There will be over 100 experiments that happen on Expedition 26. They will range from experiments in fluid physics to material science to combustion science um, to human research and biotechnology and even technology demonstration inside the vehicle and also externally too. Another study that um, has an effect or has potential for development of a countermeasure for allowing our astronauts to stay healthy in space is an experiment called integrated cardiovascular. And this experiment looks at why the heart decreases in size as the longer you stay in space. So um, scientists are interested in understanding why the heart atrophies, how to mitigate that and to potentially develop a countermeasure against that. The way they do this is that on orbit, astronauts will measure their blood pressure over time and they'll also take images of their, um, of their heart using the ultrasound on orbit and they will also take heart rate measurements over time and deliver the results to scientists to let the scientists work through the results. So we're trained as scientists and engineers from the beginning in our research that processes work in a certain way, cells respond in a certain way, um, you know, hardware responds in a certain way, and it's all based on what we know here on the ground. There are things that happen in space that could never, we'd never know about, even from what we know with the gravity vector on the ground. For example, there's a fluid uh, physics experiment called capillary flow, and it looks at the capillary flow changes of fluid in space. 
And just from the, the, um, the experiments that were done on this particular um, experiment, science experiment on orbit, we were able to come up with a brand new fundamental equation on, on fluid flow that we'd never seen before. And it's applicable not only to space, but on the ground. So that's a contribution to textbook knowledge. Did you know the 2005 NASA Authorization Act designated the U.S. segment of the International Space Station as a national laboratory? This means that other federal organizations or privately owned corporations are able to conduct experiments on this one-of-a-kind orbiting lab. Now it's time to check out what's up. NASA has everything you need to track the International Space Station in real time. Just go to this website and you'll get all the latest data, including where and when you can spot the space station in the evening sky. Today we learned a lot more about the fascinating technology and research being conducted on board the International Space Station by the crew of Expedition 26. Now it's your turn. Check out these resources and activities on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Your challenge is to research fitness in microgravity and create your own podcast about exercising and keeping fit on the International Space Station. For more information on how to develop your own podcast, visit the Do-It-Yourself podcast link on the NASA Explorer School's website. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to tune in next week when we'll learn about the extraordinary discovery NASA scientists made 50 million light years away. We'll see you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.